Hey, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm good. It was a little muted. I was like, I don't know if this is a voicemail or if this is Ginger. <laughs> I'm just quick that way. <laughs> How's your day going? You going well? Uh, it's cold. Like, <laughs> it's that time of year. I guess oh, you would know, man. right? <laughs> Uh, it is, it is like no offense, but, uh, it, it is too cold for me. Yeah. Where are you at right now? Are you in Tennessee? No, no, no. I'm in, uh, where are we right now, Aaron? <laughs> I'm in Seacomp, Massachusetts. Oh, so yeah, you're up here. I'm in Michigan. So yeah, you're pretty cold too. <laughs> yeah. But you know, that Michigan cold is, is a different thing right there in the lakes. Give me a break. Yes, <laughs> it is. And. I, I, people, people are saying snowflakes have fallen. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm denying that. So as far as I can tell, um, well, I can tell you straight up that the coldest shows I've ever played have been uh, in Michigan. <laughs> yeah. Usually probably Grand Rapids. That's really, oh my gosh. yeah, that's right by the lake. So that lake effect so is cold. ridiculous. Yeah. cold. Yeah, it's not as bad in the, in the Detroit area, but it's yeah, it's, it's cold. I'm from Texas too. I'm from, well, you probably never heard of it, but Farmersville. No, where's that at? It's between Greenville and McKinney off 380. You, between Greenville, well, that's really close to me. Really. I know. <laughs> it's, that's crazy. Yeah, um, it's about maybe 10 to 15 minutes if you went west on 380 from Greenville. Yeah. Yep, it's a town of. Did you say north or south? I didn't understand. Oh, from Greenville, Texas, it's yeah. um, actually west. Oh, it's west. Okay, yeah. okay, I got you. I yeah, that. before I it's about that. halfway between uh, Greenville and McKinney. Oh, my, okay, got you now. Yeah. Man, what a small world. That's not far from me at all. Well, you're from Mount Pleasant, right? That's right. Mount yeah. Pleasant, Texas. Watch out. Big city. I, I yeah. Um I used to work out of a station in Sulphur Springs and that's really big time, you oh, know. Oh man, Sulphur Springs is where we used to go to they had that outlet mall there or something like that. We used to go it's awful. It's not really an outlet mall, it's more like a not an outlet mall, but you know yeah. an East Texas knockoff of an outlet mall. That's where it's we used a, to go. It's a wannabe. Yeah, you know, um, it's funny because a friend of mine, Drew Mitchell, I don't know if you know him, he used to be on Power FM, now he works for the Juice TV Network. But, oh, yeah, sure. Okay, well, he wanted me to ask you, um, I said, does anybody have any questions? And he pipes up like he couldn't ask you some other time. But he's like, ask him what he thinks the best barbecue is between Sulphur Springs and Texarkana is. Oh, wow, what? He's he's asking Mount Mount Pleasant. Well, well, between really Sulphur Springs options. and like Texarkana area. Yeah, well, the only ones that I've ever been to are in Mount Pleasant. There's two of them. There's Blaylock's Barbecue and Bodacious Barbecue, and I I I don't want to get this wrong. <laughs> I tend to remember that Bodacious was like. They're just off the charts awesome. Okay, that's that's what I told him my answer was. I said bodacious. Like yeah. to me that's the only barbecue in that area. There's not a lot between Sulphur Springs and Texarkana. That's a lot of empty road. Yeah. <laughs> well, what, what I think is funny about that is that's exactly where Mount Pleasant is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> There's right. not a lot between Sulphur Springs and Texarkana. Well, there's a little town, but there's <laughs> <wouldn't> notice it. <laughs> every, the, barely anything's like right off the the interstate there. It's oh sure. It's very, very... So you guys just started your Christmas in the round last night, correct? That's right, we did. How did that go? And it was actually awesome. I mean, you know, you, you, start, you start... I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> of all the tours that you do, Christmas is the one that will sneak up and destroy you. Um, because Christmas music ain't normal. Yeah. You know, Christmas music is some mixture of jazz and blues and, and all these different variations of music and if you are not on point and if you don't have that in your soul you you will mess up bad and look like <laughs> an idiot. um but man we went out and played pretty much a flawless first 45 minutes of the show last night which was awesome you know like you have a vision in your head of what you think the first 45 minutes of the show is going to look like and and I, I kind of had a vision, but it, man, it was flawless. I mean, it was just awesome and fun, and people were having a blast. And, and you know, after that, we, we rolled right into the back half. We found a couple of little chips that we probably want to fix, but 
uh, overall. I mean, you know, we're out with Matt Hammett, former lead singer of Saints yeah. Real. Mm-hmm. And he came off the stage and he's like, my gosh, I would take that as a first night of a Christmas tour every single time because it was that good. So, man, we're excited about tonight. We're going we're gonna to dial it in tonight. So you're in Massachusetts for tonight, correct? That's right. Yeah. We're here in Seacock, oh. Massachusetts. Wow. Well, I am excited that you guys are going to be... Sometimes, you know, you sometimes you guys will be on the West Coast Winter Jam and then you're not on the East Coast. So I don't get excited when they announce the West Coast because that's not me. So, I, right. you know, I'm glad that you guys are going to be on the East Coast. So I'm excited. I'm sorry you're going to be here in the cold. You're going to be in Grand Rapids and Detroit. Um, although I will tell you in Detroit, you get to play at the brand new Little Caesars Arena. So... But, All right, well, I'll take that. So yeah. what, what happened to the palace? Is it gone? Um, that's, no, it was at, isn't that, yeah, it's at the, um, it used to be the Joe, Co- um, Joe Lewis Arena. It's where the Red that's Wings right. play. Yeah, that's it's right. it's just, it's really, like, tricked out, basically. <laughs> I mean, okay. they didn't tear it down. They just really tricked it out. And it's got way more lights and special effects than anyone would ever need. But oh, come on. That sounds like fun. but Detroit's pr- pretty proud of their Red Wings, so they had yeah. to go big on the Red Wings. Oh, sure, sure. Well, I love. Well, oh, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say. I mean, okay, it's an honor anytime Winter Jam calls you. Yeah, uh, we love those guys. They're family to us. Um, and you know, we've never in our history. One of the things that's kind of been a bit of a frustration, not not a frustration, but one of the things that has never worked out for us is we've never been able to do Winter Jam um, at the beginning of a record. We've always had to do it two years after our record came out. (laughs) And so, which is great because then everybody knows the songs, but this is an introductory Winter Jam for us in that we have a new record coming and we are so excited about it. And to be able to walk on a stage like that and introduce these songs, we... We did it on the West Coast, and it was out of this world awesome. Uh, the connection, the way that people reacted to the songs. And we just, we, we really feel blessed to be on it. I think that we're definitely, us and, us and Skillet, I think we, we've done <laughs> Winter Jam more than anybody else I know. And it feels good to be a band at this stage in our career. To be, you know, we're 17, 18 years into our career. And to be able to walk into a place like that and just encourage and bless people and high five people and you know you, you, you can't underestimate what fifteen thousand people will do to a young artist that'll scare them half to death oh yeah <laughs> absolutely so, so for us we're really we're comfortable there um and we look forward to being able to go in and just encourage and the, the opening bands and, and watch them grow and watch their platform grow and hopefully you know uh see god do some really cool things well, so since you've been been out with Skillet so many times, I'm interviewing John Cooper this afternoon. Is there a good, funny question I can ask him that will make him talk about something hilarious or embarrassing that's happened? <laughs> oh, dear Lord. Man, you know, uh, I will say this. Old John Cooper is all muscled up now. You know, he's all big yeah. and strong. And- but see, he, he you're afraid that you're church. afraid for me to do anything because he can hurt you, right? <laughs> oh no! See, see, that's the thing. I've been working a little bit myself, and I'm not. Oh. Of it. But but I will say that John is a smart dude because you know back about 15 years ago, no, maybe maybe 12 years ago, we did this tour called Shop Fest, and he was on it. They were on it, and I had it in my head. I was like, man. My dad was a pro powerlifter, so at that time I was working really hard to put some muscle on and get stronger. And, and I remember he walked by me one day when I was just hammering this workout. And he walked by backstage and he looked at me and said, he said, Jason, you're killing yourself, man. And I looked at him and I said, well, you know, I want to put some weight on. He looked at me and said, I just thought rock stars were supposed to be skinny. And, <laughs> and, uh, and so, and with that, he just walked away. So you, know, you, might, you might just tell him, just in your interview, Jason said he thought rock stars were supposed to be skinny and have no muscle. What's going on, man? Yeah, you're looking kind of ripped these days for a you're rock star. Rough, man. He must. No, actually, I talked to John. I actually talked to John, and um, and I, I issued him a little bit of a kind, like, hey, friendly, like, hey, buddy, let's work out together. So I'm hoping that he'll take me up on it because, uh, like I said, I'm I'm not afraid of him. <laughs> <laughs> you just put it out there. It probably kicked my tail, but I'm not going. I'm not going to go down quietly. I tell you that. I'll just say Jason said 
you know, he was really hurt that you wouldn't work out with him. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, he's, a, he's, he's an awesome guy. He and, is. You know, I love Skillet. I love, I love, you know what I love about them? Here's what, here's what I love about them. I love the fact that he's the same person that I met years ago. Yeah. He is the same guy. Now, things have changed. He's wise. He's, you know, he's definitely learned more. Um, through all the different things he's done. But you know what? He plays these mainstream tours and he's still John. Same guy. Yeah. And he comes back and uh, it, I think one of the greatest speeches I've ever heard him give is the I've got the microphone speech. And it was kind of a using, <clears throat> it was kind of using Marilyn Manson's words kind of against him. Against him. him. <laughs> and I, I just, I my respect level for John Cooper is through the roof. And like I said, I hope I get to work out with him get a little bit of that rub off on me. You know what though, Jason, every time I see you on my interview schedule, I just get so excited because you're one of my favorite people to interview. And I will say the same thing about you over the years. You're still Jason. You're still, you're, you're, you're probably cooler now than you were when I first met you. And you know what? It's probably because both of you are like me. You've raised children or I'm done raising mine, but you guys are still going, but you know, raising kids, I think, brings that out and it brings the humility out. <laughs> oh my gosh, does it not? And now you've got Stella. a new puppy dog. I love Stella. Uh, How cute is your her. dog? Oh my gosh. Is that really the so, name? Yeah, her name is Stella. I, I have to admit, I did not want this dog at all. No man usually does <laughs> when you have kids. And well, and I, have to, I have to put this caveat on it. I already have a golden retriever. Her name is oh. Ellie Mae. Oh, I love Ellie Mae is a full-blood uh, golden retriever, and she's also a service dog. So she is the most perfect dog ever. Like, she does not act out. She does not make mistakes. Everything she does is intentional. She's a human being who understands she's the lowest human being on the totem pole in our house. No so let's throw a puppy door. into that, right? <laughs> right. So I was like, man, I don't want to bring some puppy in here. It's going to mess up the, the peace that we have in our house. But man, this dog, I mean, and also I have to, I have to admit too, that anytime I have to tell people that I have a multi poo, it just takes my man card and throws it in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, like, can you imagine John Cooper saying, "Oh yeah, we just got a multi poo." Yeah, yeah. It's like, <laughs> like dude, you're not very manly anymore, bro. But at this point, I don't care. Um, this dog has kind of won my heart. Uh, I still post pictures of me kind of like halfway going. Uh, yeah. Uh, but she's she's got me, and she loves me now. Finally, you know, at first she didn't like me very much because I'm a disciplinarian. You know, she'd bark, and I'd be like, "You better stop that." <laughs> But now we've got a good thing going, and she kind of understands. And I post pictures all the time because I, I have to admit the dog is gorgeous. It's just the sweetest little it's dog. It's so ever. cute, that fur. Like, you just, you want to reach to your computer uh, and just pet it and crunch that fur. It's so cute. And you know what the thing is, too? The dog smells good all the time, which I can do that. You know, if it's going to be one of those dogs like that. My other problem was that I was told that this dog would not, that like, I knew this dog's mom, and this dog's mom doesn't go to the bathroom outside. Does not like to walk oh, on the no. grass. I was like, I will, I will not have that in my house. Yeah, you know? you're gonna have to learn. So, <laughs> so she likes grass. She likes leaves. She wow. likes running and playing. And she's part of the Roy family. Well, she's got to. She knows that's how she's gonna have to join in. And I tell you, your that's son, right. your son looks more like you every year. Like the taller he gets, it looks, it's less like a mini me and it's more like your little brother. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. Oh, he's, well, he's a cute. Kid. I feel bad for him. He's, know, he uh, looks like a rock star. He does. He's already got the rock star look. Well, he's going to come out on some winter jam dates. He's actually played with us before too. He's an amazing drummer. Well, um, you so have to bring may, him I out. May, I may have him sit in a couple of times on winter jam because he's a ridiculous drummer. And, um, uh, interestingly, I put my daughter, my daughter is a, is a singer now too. And I put her in the studio the other day and I could not believe how, of course I'm her father, but I had to pass the first, her recording around to a few friends and not tell them who it was. And she's got something special. So, uh, watch out. You so have you, have you played her for Seth? Do what? Have you played her for Seth? Seth Mosley? Yeah. 
No, I haven't played it for him yet. You I, have to get I, his opinion. Yeah, yeah, I, I will. I mean, I'm on right now. We're on the bus with Matt, so Matt's. Uh, oh, they they work together a lot. Gotcha. So Matt's my first first that I'm gonna play, and uh, man, she's 11, so no need to hurry. You know what I mean? Well, I'm I'm excited. I I tell Matt I wish he was. I, I mean, they were. I wish they were going to be out on winter. I wish he was going to be on Winter Jam. I miss I miss him being in Sanctus, but now that he's doing his own thing, you know, he should tag along on Winter Jam and just jump just uh, jump on your bus and hang with you guys. <laughs> well, dude, he's more than welcome to. to I, I I would tell you know he likes being home now, which is. Uh, a blessing and a half for him, but you know I have to admit I, I have to agree with you. Um, uh, no, I will say I don't know if you've heard his new record, but you need to listen. Go buy it right now. Um, right now, his new record, top to bottom, is awesome. Top to bottom, it, there's no weak point on that new record. And, and you know, it's funny. I even told him, I said, "Man, if you had released a record like this with Sanctus, my gosh, like." It, it would have been unstoppable, you know. So it's that good. Go listen to it. But um, but you know, that's one. I think I love what you just said. Like for building Four Twenty Nine right now, we're in a place now when we play our shows where I actually set up with my production people, set a pack up that has a mix for somebody. And if there's anybody in this room who's an artist and knows our songs and wants to jump on stage, they can do it. So you know, that's that's our mentality now. We we really are trying to switch our mindset and go, you know what, we're kind of becoming a little bit, we're still releasing new music and excited about the new music, but we have a legacy and we have um, we have a lot of friends and a lot of cool places. And so, yeah, we want surprises. We want people to show up and want to come on stage. And we want to, I'll get out of the way. Brother, you don't have to ask me to stop singing. Go ahead, sing, you know? I have no, I love that you guys, like, you don't really reinvent yourselves or, re, like, reinvent the wheel, but you do twist it a little bit every time like it's just a little different as a new spin but not completely it's still you know who it is like you can still tell it's you guys but i i like that every album has has your flavor but it's just a little bit different and i've never been disappointed seeing you guys in concert ever i mean i even went and saw you at a college place a couple years ago here in michigan and still you guys just blew us away and you're so much fun on stage and i i I think that's so cool that you'd invite somebody out, you know, and so on winter jam, I'll be standing on the side of the stage with my tambourine. Okay. Yeah. I, I can't, yeah. I can't play like, you know, the drums or anything, but I, I can play a mean tambourine. So I'll just get up there and my, you know, bell bottoms and I'll be in the background. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, good. I, you think I'm joking. Uh, you think I'm joking. All right. First song. It's impossible. I love, you know what? That is my favorite song. That is my favorite song uh, off the Unashamed album. Well, you got it. Bring that tambourine, all right? I'm bringing it. All right. Well, I'll let you go because I know you got other interviews to do. So I've taken up too much of your time already. But uh, you know what? I'll, I'll give you the extra time because it's an enjoyable interview. Uh see, that's why you're one of my favorites. I have to tell John. He's uh, he's moving down the scale. Jason, <laughs> well, don't tell him that. He might want to actually fight me. I'm not afraid to work out with him. <laughs> I'm not afraid to fight. Wait till you get a little more muscle on you before you fight. Hey, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'll catch him one day. You know who my who like literally one of my favorite people to interview is is John Schlitt. Like, of course. oh my gosh, if you can still be not only rocking, he's been rocking since like 1971 and, but not only that, like he's humble, he's, he's so enjoyable and charming. And even when he talks, it sounds like he's got gravel in his throat. You know, oh, I, sure. yeah. I, I love it. He can be, he can make anything sound like rock. He could sing Mary had a little lamb and you'd be like thrashing your head to it, you know, <laughs> But you, there's a guy to bring on stage. That well, you tell him I'm waiting for that. In fact, I'm he's, I was supposed to do something with him, but something fell through. So we, if you ever talk to him again, you tell him I'm still waiting to find out what, what it is we were supposed to do. I think he was shooting some television special, and he wanted me to come join. I was like, dude, you, I'll come Just, to your house and clean your windows, <laughs> John. Like, tell me what you want me to do. You know, and he's he's <laughs> like that. We had a um, – I worked with a – uh, I've been doing some uh, faith film stuff, and one of the my friends wrote and directed a movie called The Rocket, and they were like, man, I'd love to have a John Schlitt song in here. In fact, two of them, I was like, all you got to do is say something. He's like, can you hook that up? And I was like, 
yeah, basically I can ask him and he'll say yes. That's how I hook it up. Like he he just said, yeah, you can use whatever songs you want. Like no, doesn't want any royalties, doesn't want to cut of anything. Just sure, just just use them. He's just like that still. So. You know, uh, that's your goal. Yeah. John Schlitt should be every rocker's goal. <laughs> well, you, you need to tell him and when and if you do talk to him again. Yeah, I um, do. I talk to him a lot. I would cherish just a coffee with that guy. I mean, he's, you have to, you have to understand, people don't even know this record exists anymore, but the This Means War record. Yes. Came, that record was the first, that was a record that I showed my father and said, Dad, there's Christian music that's amazing. Yeah. You know I mean? Because so, when it came out, there life. wasn't a lot of variety. Right. <laughs> well, and not to mention that my dad was a huge fan. Of, was it wasn't it Head East? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my dad was a huge fan of that band before. So. Oh, it's always fun talking to you, Jason, and I'm not joking. I will hook you up with John, but then I got to do the tambourine thing. I'm just saying. All right. It's, All right. Done. it's done. Okay. Thank you, Jason. Have a blessed All day. Right.